and I was asking myself what's what's really wrong and uh, I was trying to prepare a video and uh, it was just not coming through and I was asking God why, why is it that I feel so low and uh, I know that uh, one thing that God has promised us is that uh, he'll always use us as long as we're willing and I think he wanted me to prepare this video so that you guys can be able to understand that at the time that you're really feeling low, that's the time that God wants to use you. He wants to use you at your at your poorest time, at your the time that you cannot really tell, at the time that you feel you're worthless. And this, right now, what is happening in the world, God is preparing an army, an army of soldiers. And you're going to be in that army of soldiers who are going to be speaking to the people in these end times and i want to tell you something here the bible tells us in first corinthians 1 26 that uh, the bible says for you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called god is not calling mighty people he's not calling them but who is he calling but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He does, he's not looking for the, for the great men, for philosophers, for people who feel they are full of energy. No, he's looking for the weak people so that he can confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And he continues and says, And bears things of the world, and bears which are despised, has God chosen. Yeah. The, and the things which are not, to bring not things that are, are uh, things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Are you feeling low? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling that uh, it's like you're the last one in the whole world? It's like uh, you're full of sins. You, you don't even believe that God can use you. Now, you're the perfect workmanship, the perfect person who is looking for. And uh, to explain this in details, I want to show you something here. Do you remember historically in the Bible, God in most cases has always used the weak people. He has always used the people who never thought they could do anything. Remember the story of David? David was... Um, he was just a teenage, he was a teenage uh, uh, herder, herding cattle. He did not have anything. And God used him to confound, to kill Goliath, a mighty man, a mighty soldier. God used David, someone who knew nothing. Actually, even when, uh, when uh, uh, Samuel had gone to Jesse's house, to, 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 to anoint a king because God had told him there is a king somewhere in Jesse's house. Go and anoint. <laughs> Jesse did not even think about David as a son because he said, no, 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 this, this is the weakest of all the people. Uh, he, he, let me give you the mighty men who, you know, who seem to be, you know, the other physique of being kings. Remember also God used Mary a poor young virgin from Nazareth. Nazareth, the smallest of all towns. The smallest places. You know, God used her and used Joseph. People who are poor, they were just carpenters. They had nothing to raise the king of kings and lord of lords. You see how God uses the weakest of all the people? Do you remember Moses? Moses, you know, some of you may say, ah, you see, Moses was, uh, you know, he, he was in, um, he was living in, in Egypt, in a, in a palace and all that. But remember, Moses was full of mistakes. Why did he go with Aaron? Because he was a stammerer. He could not even make a sentence by himself. Moses was also a murderer. He, he killed someone. He killed someone and ran away. Now God is using a murderer, the weakest of all the people. He was basically a runaway shepherd, 
hiding himself in the in the in the in the mountains because he was hiding he didn't know what to do he was the weakest of all the people that God could use and yet God used Moses do you remember Paul the apostle Paul he was a persecutor of Christians he persecuted the church of Christ he didn't know anything about the things of God. Why did God not choose the religious leaders or choose other great men out there? Why did he choose Paul, a persecutor of Christians, someone who was lost, who did not even know the way, and he chose him, meaning he can choose you. He chooses the weak, and these are the last times, the end times, when God is looking for the weak people to use so that he can ashamed. He can ashamed the proud who think that, you know, I'm the one who can be used because I have this and that. No, God is saying, I want to use the weak. And if you're out there and you're worried and you're saying, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen of me. I'm really weak. I don't have this. I don't have this. Let me tell you something. God uses those who are willing. He uses those who are willing. And he has told us in 1 Corinthians, he has told us in 1 Corinthians 9, uh, from verse uh, 17. See what the, the Bible tells us. See what the Bible tells us. In 1 Corinthians 9, 17. He says, For if I do this thing willingly, you see, you have to be willing. I have a reward. Now Paul tells us, I'm not doing these things just like that. I have to be willing. God uses the willing people. Are you willing to be used? Because if you are willing to be used, then God is going to use you. But if you're not willing, he's not going to force you. And another thing, God works in our weakness. The time that we are really feeling weak, we are feeling low, we don't know what to do, we, we see like the world has stopped on our side, that is the time that God wants to use us. He wants to use us. That moment that you feel your law and your world is upside down. Now, that's the time that he wants to use you. This time, many people are seated at home. They're confused. Others are saying, I don't know where I will raise my, uh, you know, money for my bills, to pay my rent, my bills, you know, food to eat, clothes to wear. And others are confused and they are, and they are asking, come on, I'm really low right now. I just want to be alone. God saying that's the time that he wants to use you. He wants to use you at your lowest. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Let me show you this. The Bible tells us that God's strength is made perfect in weakness. He says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, See what the Bible says. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. The only way God can show his strength is when he is using a weak person or a weak instrument. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul is saying, I rather glory in my persecutions, in my troubles, in my weaknesses. So that God can get, can uh, the power of God may rest upon me. You see, something that you don't understand is that it is never too late to work for God. You see, there, there are people who say, uh, things are late, I don't know, this and that. You know, pe people are always confused. Th think about Moses. When Moses was called by God, he was around 80 years. And this is the age that God called him. He was 80 years and is when he went to liberate, you know, the children of Israel, called by God to liberate them. At 80 years. Think about uh, Sarah and Abraham. They were, Sarah was about 90 years and Abraham was 100 years. When they bore Isaac as a covenant, you know, in a covenant uh, to, great, uh, to create a great people. They were very old. They did not tell God, you see, it's not possible, we will not believe in this. No, they were 80 years and God called them at that age. 
Think about Noah. When Noah was called to build the ark, when he started building the ark, he was about 500 years. How old are you? I'm not saying, of course, people will go to 500 years, but I'm telling you, you may think that I, I am so old. I, you know, I, my things, come on, God, it can't work like this. No, God is telling you, it is never too late to work for him. Others are saying, you see, now it's like the world is ending. Now, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Even if I start a ministry right now, even if I start preaching on YouTube now, who will hear me? I, I have only three subscribers five subscribers i don't have any even me when i was starting to preach actually i started uh, my youtube channel preaching on youtube uh last year when covid started i didn't i didn't know anything i i was i was just laughing at myself and i was asking really am i going to make this this is the time that i'm starting to build the act i'm starting to build this channel of mine to to try and preach to people I only have one view, two views, and I'm like, sometimes I get zero views and nobody's watching. And I was always asking God, now, is it too late? No, it's never too late. It's never too late. Now, something else, we are all, we all have something, do you know, we all have something that God can use. All of us, we have something that God can use. You may not sit down there and say, oh, I have nothing which can be used. Remember, what did Moses have? Moses had a, he had a staff, you know. God used this staff as a, to, to do a lot of, uh, you know, miracles through it. You know, to, to, uh, to turn the staff into a snake. Uh, this staff is on which, uh, you know, he hit the, 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 the sea to part it into two. You know, God, God, God uses what you have. What do you have? I remember when I said my ministry, I didn't have anything. I just told God, God, the only thing I have uh, is a mobile phone and some internet. Please use this one because I, I'm, I, I'm not this kind of guy who will go to the streets and start telling people, uh, preaching to people. It's a bit hard for me. I told God, please, if you want to use me, just use me on the internet. That's what I have. Remember David? David, he had a slingshot. He had a slingshot and only five and five stones. That is what God used. He asked him, hey, what do you have? I have a slingshot and five stones. Okay, that's what I'm going to use. What do you have? What do you have yourself? Remember even the, the boy, this small boy, he had two fish and five loaves. And this is what God turned to feed 5,000 people. He was just asked, who has something here? A young boy comes and says, okay, I have two fish and five loaves. Are you still worried that you have nothing? And you're saying, oh, I'm so depressed. My, my, I don't know, this end times, I can't preach to anyone because I have nothing. I don't even know. I only, ha I only know one verse. That is the verse that God wants to use. He wants to use exactly that one. Do you remember the story of Esther, Queen Esther? Queen Esther, she was a Jew. And uh, she was married to a king. The only Jew. And the king loved her so much. And it came a time when the Jews were about to be killed. Because uh, there was a guy called Naaman. Who had uh, decided that he wants to kill everyone who is a Jew? He, he, I think he just had a beef with uh, uh, someone called Mordecai. And then Esther was called by Mordecai, who was a relative. And, and, they told, uh, and Mordecai told Esther, you have to go and talk to the king about this. And Esther said, okay, you see, uh, the king has not called me and we just can't go to the king's palace like that without being called because it's, it's against the, the rules and the laws. He might kill me. And Mordecai told her, you are a queen right now, Esther. You never know why God set you to be a queen at this time. And see what, what uh, uh, Mordecai was saying here. Let me show you. In the book of Esther, something so profound for, and uh, verse 14. See what the Bible says here. 
If thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, if you don't go to go and talk to the king so that he can save the Jews, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. If you will not go to preach, if you will not go to speak to the king, if you will not go to speak to the people who are lost right now in the world in these end times, God is going to raise other people from another place. He'll bring deliverance from another place. And he continued and said, But thou and thy fathers thou shall be destroyed. And who knows? Whether you are come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Who knows that that's the reason why you are elected to, you are chosen to be a queen for a time like this. So that you can save the Jews from being destroyed. And I want to ask you, my brother, my sister, you're there, you're sitting down, you're saying, I only have one verse. I don't know what to say. I'm confused. I'm the, I'm the least of my brethren. I'm one person who knows nothing concerning the things of God and the Bible. I only know, I don't have anything. I'm not a pastor. I don't have a degree of a theology. What if you are chosen for a time like this? At a time of the end times. And things are really tough. And you have been called so that you can preach to your sisters, to your brothers, to your parents, to your neighbors, to your uh, uh, Facebook friends, to your YouTube friends, to your Twitter uh, followers. To whoever is near you, to the people out in the streets, what stiff you are called for a time like this. And you sit down there and you do nothing. And you keep on saying, you see the rapture is about to come, the rapture is about to come. And you are waiting for others to preach. Wake up and preach and do what is right. What if you are called for a time like this? And for those who are not saved, let me tell you. God is not going to use you. Even if he uses you, you have no rewards in heaven. I'm sure God has used uh, unbelievers like Nebuchadnezzar and other people. But did they have rewards in heaven? No, because they were not saved. So how can you be saved so that you can be able to be used by God? Simple gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You have to believe how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day as according to the scriptures. Jesus died for your sins. And if you believe that his death was not for nothing, it was for you. He shed his blood at the cross for you to be saved. Then you will be saved. And once you're saved, anything that you do will be counted upon you as a reward. You can watch my other video about rewards in heaven and you'll be able to understand. So, my friends, when you're feeling low and you're confused and you're wondering what's happening of me, Please remember that God uses the weak to ashamed the wise. And at those times when you really feel that you just want to be alone and you're confused, tell God, please use me at my weakest. This is a time that I really need you to, watch, uh, to use me. And God is going to use you. Hope it's been a blessing to you. If you like this video, please you can give it a thumbs up and also you can share to other people so that they can hear the word of God and also be able to be encouraged. You can also subscribe or also I usually post new videos every day, and of course, they can be encouraging to you. God bless you and have a great, great time.